All right. Greetings, everybody. I'm Cattle Parish Commissioner Mario Chavez. On behalf of the other commission members and Dr. Woodrow Wilson, thank you for all being here today. Thank you for the media, as always. We want to thank all of our media partners for being here today as we continue to share some of the promising news about working to fight this pandemic throughout Cattle Parish. I'd also like to thank the Louisiana Army National Guard for being here. I used to be in the Guard, so uh, I like seeing all these soldiers here, and I like what you guys are doing. Thank you for coming out and helping us out here in Cattle Parish. We're excited to be able to officially announce the beginning of rapid results COVID-19 testing in medically underserved communities across the parish, beginning right here in the MLK community this Saturday. COVID-19 has affected many individuals and families in our area and unfortunately have seen the effects of these diseases across the parish. No neighborhood or region of our parish is immune and that is why access to testing is so important. We've heard and seen that national and state guidance includes widespread testing as a critical component in tracking COVID-19 and moving all of us towards gradually reopening our economy and returning to some of our activities is very important. And so utilizing this mobile testing in our communities helps us do our part for the state and the nation. This partnership is due to the collaboration of Cattle Parish Commission, LSU Health Shreveport, and other community partners. The commission strongly believes that access to medical resources during this time is so critical, and we are confident that our investment of $175,000 in this mobile testing is paramount to continu continuing to beat this pandemic. I'd also like to thank Commissioner Stephen Jackson for bringing this legislation to the committee for full consideration and his commitment to public health and working with the commission body to make this investment a reality. We are thankful to be working with some of the most brilliant doctors and workers in medicine right here in Cattle Parish. LSU Health Shreveport, thank you so much for everything that you have done. We know that the results that are able to be processed through the Emerging Viral Threat Lab will be instrumental to the work in learning more about COVID-19 and even in the creation of a vaccine. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. G. E. Galley, Chancellor of LSU Health Shreveport, who will speak more to the medical school's efforts and some more specifics on the mobile testing unit. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. I want to thank everyone that's here today and everyone that's helped put this together. As the Chancellor of the LSU Health Sciences Center here in Shreveport, this is a very proud uh, day for me. The David Raines Clinic is a clinic that we've been looking forward to uh, collaborating with for some time. I want to thank the Caddo Commission for helping facilitate this. All the commissioners, uh, particularly uh, Commissioner Chavez and Commissioner Jackson. I want to thank the National Guard. They've been tremendous in helping us uh, already. We have a move that's going to happen this uh, uh, Monday. Uh, we're, we're moving patients over from the, the Kings Highway location over to the old Schumpert property at St. Mary's campus in conjunction with uh, Austin LSU Health of North Louisiana. So thank you guys for all the hard work that the National Guard has, has done for us. Our EVT lab, the Emerging Viral Threat Lab, is going to be a real game changer, not just for Shreveport, not just for Caddo Parish, not just for Northwest Louisiana, but for the entire state and the entire region. This is a facility, a lab that is getting not just regional notoriety, but national and international notoriety. It's going to allow testing to be done, viral testing as well as antibody testing, and it's going to improve both qualitatively and quantitatively the access to care for the underserved folks in all of Louisiana and indeed the entire Arquitex. So I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank in particular Mr. Alan Organic who was really one of the first individuals in our community to step forward. Alan, thank you so much and provide some additional support in addition to the support that, that the Caddo uh, Commission has provided us. Mr. Organic stepped forward and, and made a very generous donation to help support 
our lab, the efforts of our lab, the researchers, the mobile units that's going out, the additional people that we have to hire to help do this, the uh, cost of the materials and everything that are involved. Uh, and uh, I can just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. And again, thank you. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Dr. Chris Kevel, who is uh, my Vice Chancellor of Research and Dean of our Graduate School at LSU Health Sciences Center. And he basically is the mastermind along with folks that work with him for the Emerging Viral Threat Lab and all the research that's associated. We currently have over 12, over 12 clinical trials that are COVID related that are being conducted in our Health Science Center as we currently speak. Dr. Kevel. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ghali, for uh, that introduction. And I'd also like to uh, echo my appreciation and thanks to both the Caddo Parish Commission, as well as the State Guard, uh, National Guard, as well as other local uh, leaders, uh, and more importantly, uh, the David Raines uh, Clinic here. As Dr. Ghali mentioned, we've had a history of working with many individuals in the community to bring healthcare and treatments to folks that may have difficulty actually coming to our facility. Uh, Dr. Ghali mentioned that this uh, van that we have through our Partners in Wellness program will really be a game changer. It will allow us not only this Saturday to come to the David Raines facility, but it will allow us to go into many other communities. So just to give you an example of where this, uh, this van will go, um, in uh, April 28th, it's scheduled to go to Moortown. Uh, May 1st, it's scheduled to go to North Caddo. May 2nd, it's scheduled to go to the Cedar Grove Sunset Acres area. And then on May 9th, it's scheduled to come back here again. So one of the things that I'd really like for all the citizens of uh, Caddo Parish, as well as uh, Shreveport Bossier to understand, is that there are many opportunities for you to be able to get tested, so that if you can't make this weekend, this Saturday, by all means, please check out uh, the website for the Cattle Parish Commission as well as the Emerging Viral Threat Lab that will be able to provide you with a list of the future dates where you can come out and be tested. The other thing that I will tell uh, everyone here is that because we have such a strong partnership with both David Raines and many of the other clinics uh, and facilities in the state, uh, all of this information is closely and safely guarded. So your medical information, all the information that you will provide is completely private. No information is given out to anybody else. All of the test results will be reported to the physician that's in charge of your treatment and will be communicated to you directly. So that's a very important thing for everybody to realize that uh, they're definitely going to be taken well care of and all their information is going to be safeguarded. The last thing I will say is that um, Again, this could not have been possible without multiple individuals, uh, not only uh, Dr. Ghali at our campus, but also uh, other individuals throughout the state. Uh, Governor Edwards was really instrumental in allowing us to uh, have executive orders where we could stand up this Emerging Viral Threat Laboratory within a matter of 10 days. And just to give you some perspective, for us to emerge out of this viral pandemic, we have to test, test, test. And right now, our Emerging Viral Threat Laboratory can handle up to about 1,500 tests a day. And we anticipate growing that by another 1,000 within another four, four weeks. So we really are uh, quite thankful to the state, uh, as well as everyone at LSU. And I will um, wrap up now, and I'm delighted to introduce to you uh, the mayor of uh, Shreveport, Mr. Adrian Perkins, who will share some words. I want to thank Dr. Kevel for uh, his relentless work uh, in us fighting COVID-19. As he said, uh, testing, testing, testing is so important for us to really overcome this virus uh, and put the necessary precautions in place. And it's something that we should be very proud of is that Shreveport per capita actually tests more than any other city in the state of Louisiana. And Louisiana per capita tests more than any other state in the entire country. So that's something that we should all be proud of. And I'd like to thank Chris and the team at LSU Health as well for all that they're doing. 
Um, I'm, I'm myself, just like uh, Commissioner Chavez, I see the National Guard here and I want to thank them first. Uh, but it also reminds me of another time in my life uh, when I was fighting another kind of war. Uh, and I think back to that team at the time was the U.S. Army, but now I'm so proud of the team that I get to stand and fight with every day. Uh, and in recognizing that team, I have to thank uh, LSU Health once again. I have to thank the Cattle Commission. We have Dr. Wilson here. I have to thank uh, President Chavez and uh, specifically Commissioners Jackson and Burrell that brought the legislation to the forefront for us to have the mobile testing that we're celebrating today. I also like to thank the uh, city council. We have uh, we have uh, Councilman um, Willie Bradford here with us today, whose district we're in, uh, and his support throughout this. Uh, the media, thank you so much for what you do. And we also have Chief Ben Raymond here as well from the Shreveport side. And also from the private uh, side, uh, Mr. Organic, who had his uh, very, very generous donation uh, that's helped our community protect ourselves against this virus. Uh, so we're really coming together as a team, and that's something for us to celebrate. Um, health equity is a serious, serious issue in our community, in our country, uh, and this virus has exposed that gulf more than ever. Uh, the gulf between those who have quality health care access and those that don't. Uh, there are many reasons we have seen COVID clusters form in underserved areas. For starters, some of these urban tracts are 25 times more densely populated than our suburbs. But this is about more than the rate of spread. It is also about the mortality rate in these communities. Sadly, we, we have lost 93 of our coworkers, our friends, and our family members to this virus. 73% of those have been African American. The state is now providing more localized data on COVID-19 cases, breaking each parish down by the number of cases in each track. This helps the public better understand why we are seeing a higher mortality rate among African Americans. The areas with the highest concentration of cases are not just densely populated, they also tend to have higher rates of hypertension, obesity, diabetes, and smoking. This is why accessible rapid testing is so important. And not just accessible rapid testing, but again, overall providing quality health care to our citizens. The Shreveport Police Department will assist by providing security for the mobile testing sites. I want to thank the Cattle Commission one more time, Dr. Golly for his leadership at LSU Health and their Emerging Viral Health Clinic. I'm so grateful we are able to work together as a community to fulfill this critical need. It is because our teamwork, I know we will be able to overcome this virus. Thank you so much and at this time Dr. White will come to the podium. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So um, I just want to reiterate what everyone has said. This is such a tremendous um, gift for our community that the commission, that LSU, HSC, that <laughs> Mr. Organic, that all of our um, city council workers, everybody who came together to make this possible, what a tremendous blessing it is. We know that we have people who feel um, that they are not able to get the testing that they need. We want to make sure that that need is met. We want people to understand that there is no cost to be tested, that um, you, if you have symptoms, if you um, feel like you're sick, that you need to please make sure you avail yourself of these tests. We need to know who is sick in our community, and I think the um, Viral Threat Lab is going to really help us uh, to tease out a, more under, a greater understanding of what is going on in our community. We also have all of our other testing sites still up and running and we're urging them to continue that process. We want people to know that this is not over yet. While we are seeing improvement, we still need to take this very seriously. We need to understand that this disease could come back in another wave, which could be worse for all of us than the first wave. You know, the mayor just announced, you know, the 93 deaths. We don't want to see double that or greater numbers. We don't even want to see one more death. We want to see people really take this seriously, listen to the guidance that the governor is going to put out. We understand everybody's tired of not uh, being out and about and everybody needs to get back to work, but let's do it the right way so that we don't have a rebound and have to shut things back down and have a worse situation than we had the first time. Um, 
please avail yourself of these mobile testing sites that have been listed. I think it's a great opportunity. We want to know that you are able to get the, the testing and the medical care that you need. We want you to know that your data is not being used for anything else but just to help you and that it's not going to cost anything. So, um, like I said, it's very important. You're very important. Your health is very important. This disease, it is unlike anything I've ever seen before. I used to do pediatric critical care. I've worked in ICUs. My friends who are ICU docs are telling me this is a very scary disease. If you get it and get well, then you're lucky. If you get it and get really sick, it can be extremely dangerous. So don't take it. For, don't take your health for granted. Make sure that you know what you're dealing with and make sure that you get yourself tested. Um, I think that I'm the last one to formally speak. It, does anyone have any questions for any of the people who have? For Dr. Gawley. Dr. Gawley? Dr. Gawley. Common sense tells me that there is no Spanish language communication coming out, and maybe, uh, I don't know, is there Spanish language material for the band that's going to go out into the city and the parish? Yeah, uh, so you're, you're talking from from the hospital side? That's right. Yes, sir. I, I, I think uh, what I would recommend would, would be to contact uh, uh, Miss Tina Martinez. I've tried, I've tried calling her six times. And you're not getting any? And she Okay. And at this point, uh, this is an underserved community that may not even have testing going on, and right. may not even be aware of sites. Is there information available for our Spanish language community in the parish and the city? There, there should be, and uh, I would say that there is. If it's not, it should, it should be available. And again, I, the, I don't run the hospital, but I, my recommendation is to have, is to contact Tina Martinez, and I can ask Miss Lisa Babin, who works who is our communication on the health center side to make contact with Ms. Martinez and I'm 100% sure she should get back to you rapidly. Okay. okay, and thank you for bringing that up. Yes, sir, thank you. Any questions? Stephen Jackson, you don't mind? Yeah, Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Um, Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. All right, yesterday we were able to distribute 90,000 masks to the community for the city to the three port. Um, as I was reporting uh, about the masks and the location to pick them up, a lot of people were complaining or upset because it was done during working hours or mm -hmm. maybe a lot of locations ran out of masks quickly. Uh, do we have another emergency daytime in place where you guys have some left over or another issue of the masks? Right. So the masks that were uh, provided yesterday as a um, as a favor, as an in kind favor from Haynes Corporation. Uh, those are the people who uh, make our uh, undergarments, and uh, they provided that as a philanthropic effort. And so they only gave us a, a limited supply. Uh, what we did was there was a meeting between the parish and the city to figure out what was the best way to equitably uh, distribute those. And so um, they were provided. Uh, on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, we hope and pray that there will be another philanthropic effort, uh, just like it was mentioned, Mr. Organic. A lot of private sector individuals have stepped up uh, to do good deeds, and so we hope we hope that other good deeds will step up. And hopefully, the you know what Haynes did was just the start of people stepping up to donate masks, uh, because I had areas in my district uh, that did not receive. Uh, any locations received the mask and so it was not anything that was arbitrarily done it was just a matter of resources and so when you have limited resources to work with uh, you, you kind of got to work work within those means and so it, you know we just want everybody to be patient and let them know that our leaders our mayor our parish administrator our parish president we're working very diligently to uh, to ensure that we get resources to everybody in an equitable way so just to be accurate we are out of they we are out Doc, we are out we are out of masks, and uh, you know we'll put out the clarion call for another ask of individuals. Uh, we'll even reach out to the Haynes Corporation. I'm sure we have a contact uh, to let them know. You know, once they make some more, if they have some more available, 
uh, and, and we will do our best to try to prioritize those areas that may have been skipped over. But I received several of those calls as well, and we are sensitive to that. But again, our hands are tied because it's a supply issue. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Uh, I, I'm late, but I'll just kind of take some, I guess, uh, discretionary privilege. I know we have a partner here, David Raines, uh, to bring them up. I guess I'm biased to them. Uh, but I'll bring our CEO, Mr. Willie White, up uh, to, to kind of just talk about what the uh, uh, what they're contributing to the effort as well. And I don't know if we've had an opportunity to recognize our National Guard. I was on the phone with Colonel Lubert this morning. Okay, and uh, they'll be here to assist. They're not here to police, uh, but they are here to assist with traffic flow and things of that nature. And uh, I'd be remiss if I leave the microphone and didn't recognize Dr. Golly and uh, Chris Kevel with the medical school and Dr. Andrew Urosco. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, they take our phone calls whenever we have questions, and they've been very, very uh, proactive. And I see the police chief here, uh, SPD, so it's an all-hands-on-deck approach uh, to help our community. Not only is this something that we're doing to uh, combat COVID-19, but an effort to reopen our economy. Uh, we have casinos shut down. We have businesses closed. Uh, tennis courts are closed. If you want to get the tennis court back closed, let's get everybody tested so we can get back to playing golf and just the things that we enjoy. So uh, we want to continue to emphasize social distancing. Uh, we want to continue to emphasize uh, staying at home in, unless you absolutely have to go out. And this effort tomorrow is to make sure we get as many people as tested so we can identify where those uh, hot spots are and be able to con uh, contain the uh, virus. Well, good afternoon, and I want to thank Commissioner Jackson. Uh, David Raines Community Health Centers is excited to be able to partner with uh, the Health Sciences Center to bring testing uh, to these underserved communities. Uh, it is our goal to test as many persons as we possibly can through this effort uh, and, again, bring care to the community, particularly those who have been historically disadvantaged. And so uh, David Raines Community Health Centers is, is very excited to partner with LSU and having their mobile unit at our facilities to offer uh, this opportunity for our communities to get testing. Questions? That's it. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, as many people tomorrow uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 1625. David Raines Road, 1625 David Raines Road, uh, David Raines Community Health Center. So we look forward to, to having you out. Uh, you can call and pre-register at 227-3354. That's 227-3354 if you want to pre-register uh, for the screening tomorrow. Uh, but we are expecting to take care of all comers. So please uh, come out and take advantage of this opportunity. And once again, thank you to Dr. Golly and the uh, Health Sciences Center for this opportunity to partner. No, you won't need a time or appointment. We will have uh, the registration list at the uh, check-in, and so all you would need to do is check in and then go through the testing procedure. First come, first serve. Be first come, first serve. Yes. Are you looking for sick people or well people? We're looking for anyone who thinks they've been exposed. Uh, and so the goal is to identify anyone who believes they've been exposed, if they're having symptoms, certainly to come out and be tested. We also are encouraging persons that if they have a, a physician or if they want to use David Raines Community Health Center, that if they're having symptoms, you do not have to wait until the testing. Uh, you can come to any of our facilities, and we are offering uh, screening and testing at our facilities. Uh, so we're encouraging anyone who believes they've been exposed uh, to come out and get tested. Can I answer any other questions? Underlying conditions, certainly there are underlying conditions that contribute to the risk factor uh, for uh, COVID-19. If you have underlying medical conditions uh, such as diabetes, uh, heart conditions, uh, other medical conditions, you are at greater risk. And so if you have underlying conditions and you're concerned that you've been exposed, uh, we would encourage you to come out and get tested. I'm not sure if this question applies to you, but what about, um, I know you guys are trying to stop the spreading of it, but like when we go to certain places to get food, we know there's a lot of employees of the businesses don't even have on gloves or 
any type of particular gear. And, it, and it's a lot of people inside the restaurant. How do we know about them if they don't have it or do they have it? And it's, is that a way it can be spreaded or something? Because I notice that a lot. Yeah, I would defer that question to, to Dr. White. I, I'm not a clinician, so I'll, I'll stay in my lane on that. <laughs> Thank you. So, first off, if you see too many people in a place, you can call your police department. They are working with us, the sheriff is as well, to go and speak to these sites if they have too many people and talk to them about really what they should be doing. As far as PPE, um, you know, gloves and masks are only good for us if we use them correctly. So we're asking people to take off their gloves. So for example, when you see people in the drive-thru and they're using the same pair of gloves for every person that they're dealing with, that's not good. Because then they're taking my germs off my credit card on their little fingers and then they're passing it to the next person when they take that credit card. So what you need to do is make sure that you are cautious. So we're not sure that everybody is always going to do the right thing. So what you need to do is when you hand something to somebody else and take it back, you wash your hands. Hand sanitizer if you can't hand wash, but make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Make sure if you don't have a way to do that, that you keep your hands off your face. If you can do that, you're going to protect yourself until you can wash your hands. We're, we want to help the community and make sure that we're keeping people safe. So if you see something, report it. We're happy to go and take a look and see if we can improve that situation, but also do what you can to keep yourself safe.